Hey, this is Jeremy and welcome back to Blender for Designers. Today I'm going to be talking about four myths about CMYK. And that explains why I'm wearing such colorful clothing. So let's get started. Now the first myth is that CMYK is the opposite of RGB. In an ideal world, this would be true. Let me briefly explain how color is supposed to work. The cones in our eyes see red, green, and blue light. So for printing, we should use not red, not green, and not blue. In other words, cyan, magenta, and yellow. Now you can do this. Transparency film here uses nothing more than cyan, magenta, and yellow dyes. And you get some really rich colors that you'll never reproduce in CMYK. This is the gold standard for years. But when it comes to printing inks, you get this. They're supposed to be absorbing red, green, and blue, but they don't do it nearly as well as dyes. And particularly cyan does not absorb red very well. Now, of course, you add K, or black, which does add a little bit of richness, though not nearly as much richness as most RGB. Now, these are for offset printing inks, which is the kind of CMYK you get in Photoshop. And that brings us to our next myth. Use CMYK for all printing. Now, this can be super confusing, because if you look at these as an inkjet printer and a laser printer, they all take cyan, magenta, and yellow, either ink cartridges or toner cartridges. This is confusing though. Use RGB. They want RGB data. They want to get RGB. Now there are some exceptions. Some laser printers will take CMYK, but the CMYK you have in Photoshop does not correspond to the cyan, magenta, yellow inks or toner that are printed. This is what you use CMYK for, an offset printer. That's really what the CMYK in Photoshop is designed for. And the third myth is that conversion from RGB is a big deal. Now it's not nothing. You will lose your brighter and more saturated colors, but usually the defaults are pretty good and pretty much what you want. Let's take a look in more detail. Let's take a picture. And then we'll bring it into Photoshop to see how it behaves with CMYK. Now in Photoshop, you can check what it's gonna look like when it converts by hitting Command Y. It's a CMYK preview. And I'm gonna to toggle back and forth between the two of them so you can see the difference. And the only place you really see the difference is my shirt. Um, you can see actually where you're going to lose color in CMYK if you do Command Shift Y, which is what they call a gamut warning. And gamut means, if it's out of gamut, it means that the color is too bright for CMYK. So you can see it's most of my, sh my jacket there and then a little bit of these books in the background. But as you probably notice, you barely notice the change in the books in the background. It's really mostly my jacket. Now you're going to lose those bright colors no matter what. And usually you do, which is what the default does, is to basically just blow them out. And usually, honestly, that's fine because we don't see a lot of detail, particularly in the colors. We see details in the tones. And as long as you preserve the tones, which it does, you should be okay. Now, sometimes you may want to tweak the color a bit. Like there's some things you can do around just changing the hue of the color, if that makes sense. Like I'm actually probably going to do, yeah, you can kind of change that, you know, sometimes the cyan's just a little bit brighter and it may give you a better, a better look. Another thing you can do is desaturate the other colors. Like let's say this, this, this jacket is the hero and you really want to make it pop. So you desaturate all the rest of the colors to make it you know, stand out more. It's also worth keeping in mind that a lot of real world images don't have these kind of saturated colors. So I'm taking a look at the uh, Instagram Explore page and the Flickr Explore page. And I bought them into Photoshop. And we're gonna, I'm gonna do a CMYK preview. And you see the only real colors we're getting that's out of gamut is this well, this kind of minor blue here and this blue in his sweatshirt. But I'm going to guess that actually their faces are going to be a lot more important than his sweatshirt. So don't honestly worry about it. Um, usually skin tones are a lot, are really the most important thing and they are well within the CMYK gamut. Um, looking at the Flickr Explore page, which has no people in it, um, you can see that, you know, you have a little bit of red here that gets out of gamut, but you can probably blow that out. And then a lot of these are just, there are not a lot of colors that are really bright in some real world images. Now, some of you may have seen a graph like this and wondered, aren't there some colors that are in the CMYK gamut or that only reproduce in CMYK and not in RGB? And if you look at this graph, this is actually basically, these are all the colors that we can see. This is sRGB, which is mostly the standard RGB, and this is swap CMYK. And yes, there are indeed some colors that are only reproducible in CMYK and not in RGB. But honestly, like, they're kind of weird colors. They're like, yellows and green, really bright yellows and greens, and they're not particularly common. And given that images are shot in RGB, all cameras are RGB and usually rendered in RGB, um, as far as I know, there's no way to render in CMYK and it would be kind of silly to do it given that our eyes are RGB. So honestly, it's, it's, it's a very, very minor worry. Now, the fourth myth is that all blacks are the same. 
This doesn't have any racial implications, it's just about inks. So there's basically two ways to form black in CMYK. There's just using the black ink, and then there's something called rich black, where you add some cyan, magenta, and yellow into the black. And you just gotta be kind of careful about this. So here I have an image here. It's an InDesign. Uh, this is the render I did for my iPhone, and it's on a black background. But the black background is only black in the K value. It's uh, here, actually, I can bring up the swatches here. So it's just, it's just solid black. And it's out of my screen here, but you can go to View, Proof Colors, and you kind of see what it's going to look like. And this is how it's going to print. You're going to have a darker image because the image is converted as rich black versus the regular black. But if you go to the next page, I used a rich black here, which is, uh, if you if I click on that, you'll see that that's uh, 75, 68, 57, 90. And that's, that's what I got out of Photoshop is a standard swap rich black. You may have to talk to your printer about which rich black they want to use. But you do want to be careful, especially when you're placing images on black and you want to have them be consistent. Now, one place you don't want to use rich black is in text. Now, yes, you'll get a nice dark text, but you look at this text and it's pretty thin. And what happens if you misregister? Which means what happens if the different plates, the cyan, magenta, and yellow, separate? Which totally will happen. Believe me, most printers are not that good. Um, and especially over a long print run. So you're going to get something like this. And especially if you go from a distance, you know, step back a second, it'll look kind of blurry and wrong. So be, you want to use just solid black with your text. And that brings you to another point. The whole reason we have CMYK, the whole reason we have that extra K, is because the vast majority of printed material has text. Now the K does help the image, but it's not totally necessary. You can get a pretty decent image out of just cyan, magenta, and yellow. I've actually, I, I can't find the book now, but I saw um, a printer did a book where they just used cyan, magenta, and yellow inks, and honestly it didn't look too bad. So the K is just a nice to add a little bit of richness, but it actually really isn't necessary. The only reason we have it is because, as I said, Basically everything has text in it. And now one final bonus myth is that you can't have CMYK in film and video. Now of course you can, but usually it makes little sense. But one thing I did find out, I just saw this video that Vox.com did, and apparently some of the early Technicolor processes used not just cyan, magenta, and yellow, but black as well, the key. Although we said that the black in film was usually used for alignment for registration purposes, because they used a dye transfer process. Anyway, the video and the follow-up where I got that information is really fascinating, really interesting. It was honestly an inspiration for this video, and I will link them both in the description below. And just as a last bonus thing, I want to show you how I used video to do some CMYK separations. And now when you bring video into Photoshop, you can totally just convert it to CMYK. Just hit don't merge. And then what you can do is you go to adjustments and you create a channel mixer. And then we'll just call this one cyan. And you just hit monochrome and there you have it. And then you can create the rest of them, which I'm just gonna speed through right here. So there you have it. You can see the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And then to export it, you can just export uh, images for each, or videos for each of these from Photoshop. And so there you go, the four and plus one bonus myth of CMYK. And now of course, CMYK is a big topic and I haven't covered everything, so uh, there is a lot more. If you guys know more, uh, please leave it in comments. I'd love to hear it, love to like get into discussions about this. Um, and that's been sort of another general design topic. Uh, got some other Blender ideas too, but uh, just kind of want to get your feedback on whether you like these more general topics or should I be more specific into Blender? And I don't really have a good segue into this, but I'm going to go ahead and promote again my 3D tool for designers, Mockup 3D. Still developing it, still got some uh, new things coming out, and I'll keep updating you on this channel. But uh, So just uh, check it out if you haven't already, or even if you have already. I, I put some new features in this week, so enjoy. Um, and yeah, enjoy in general and have a good one. Goodbye.